Okay, as requested, I'm going to do a reaction video to Tom McDonald's No Lives Matter. Well, this may be one of several reaction videos, I'm not quite sure, but I was asked to do this by one of my commenters after I did the K-pop Cancel Kids video, and I promised to do it for real, like a real reaction video. I've literally never seen this. I promise, I've never seen this. I've never seen any of his videos. So as hard as that may be to believe, because I now see how big and popular he is, um, it's true, actually, I've never watched them. So this is for real. I'm gonna play it and I may pause periodically to react, or I may let it play the whole three minutes and 12 seconds and then comment. We shall see, but fasten your seatbelts, here goes nothing. Hip-hop diet is full of guys who cannot even rap Facts. Media dividing us by colors, white or black Facts. If you believe in Jesus, these days Christians get attacked Facts. If you don't hate police, then everybody thinks you're whack And everything's so connected Black Lives Matter got so aggressive White folks who agree can't support the message Both sides go to war because they don't respect it Our social climate from the global tension Turned to total violence and a whole depression We could unify and then I'll go against them But we let them divide us with votes and elections hey. The music we bump all about shooting guns and doing drugs hey, whoa. The things that we want are promoted subliminally through the songs Like, you need a fast car You need designer clothes You need a rap star To tell you to start popping pills, hit the blunt And go live at the club till you're broke It's all controlled by the elites Put fake news all over our screens Convincing the right to go fight with the left And distract from the fact that it's each other we need uh, Divided by race and religion Segregated into teams uh, You a white supremacist If you're not, I guess you Antifa Screaming from the rooftops, beat down better Turn us on each other now, no lives matter If we do what the news wants, blood gon' splatter Turn us on each other till no lives matter Freedom's dead if you have an opinion, take it back Facts. People hate the president, if you don't then you trash Indoctrinate the nation using news and mainstream rap Facts. The government abuses us, it's all part of the plan Facts. And it's so confusing, Black Lives Matter is a valuable movement But all lives matter ain't racist or stupid It's non-black humans who don't feel included All colors fall under laws to govern the whole country and we all suffer We're all broken, nobody recovers until we accept that we're all brothers Hey, the music we make, all about big booties and getting paid Hey, whoa we watch the news and it fills up our brains with violence and riots and race Like this is a race war, you need to hate more Get what you came for You need some songs about Xanax and violence so you can escape more What a vicious cycle we can't break away from They control the culture, they control the paper, they're indoctrinated I'm just gonna stop here because you're probably wondering why well, I haven't stopped yet Cause I'm listening, because he's right I, I have yet to find fault with it so am I, am I supposed to, am I supposed to like pick it apart or something? Because so far he's correct in my opinion. I mean, obviously I don't know everything and my opinion isn't a fact, but to me, in my opinion, my reaction is he's spot on. I've yet to hear anything that doesn't resonate with me. I feel like people are in agreement that, you know, there was a need for police reform that every rational thinking person could get behind, not just because of George Floyd, way before that. Think Eric Garner. Think way before that even. Okay, can we go back to Tony Timpa? I know he's white, but they're trying to divide us. Now you might say, who's they, Deb? The state, the elite, a whole bunch of people. I mean, it's not like any one group. There might be, though I do not know. <laughs> there might be some group of people sitting somewhere in a dark room. I just don't really picture it that way. I picture it as people who are in power are leveraging their power and our freedoms to do exactly what he's describing, to pit us against each other. When in fact, all lives do matter, but we can't say that. And as a consequence, no lives matter to the people in power. A whole generation till the patriots start to hate the nation The music we love make us dumb and addicted The news that we watch is brainwashing the children The viruses, riots, and racist conditions Ain't problems, they're symptoms of life in the system Yeah I'm wearing a shirt 
right now. I don't know if you could see it. It says, I think, end systemic racism, defund the schools. Because I believe, as I've said on this channel before, that the most immoral institution we have right now, speaking about immoral, is the government school system. And it doesn't matter that it's different from state to state. It doesn't matter. The fish is rotten from the head. The entire concept of compulsory government schooling reeks of fascism. I mean, it's it's like what Nazis do and Stalinists and, you know, uh, communists do. It, it's not what free people do. It's not what free thinkers do. And he's 100% right. Now, just to play devil's advocate a little bit, um, not every kid, obviously, is going to be brainwashed by these songs or, you know, by games or by any of this there will always be people who squeak on through for one reason or another, and that is why they will never completely control us. In fact, I would argue the harder they try, the less they'll succeed. They're succeeding right now because most people haven't lost enough. That's my theory. But I do think the average person is definitely susceptible to this. And that's, that's what makes a culture, is what the average are doing. Screaming from the rooftops, beat down better. Turn us on each other now, no lives matter. If we do what the news wants, blood don't splatter. And people have asked me, why do you think the news wants it? Well, I used to say it was just for clicks and money. That they're in the business of making money, and if it bleeds, it leads. If it's sensational, it sells. That's been the case for decades. Ever since we had 24-hour news, they had to fill that empty space and keep our attention from all the competing sources of information and entertainment, and it's gotten harder and harder and harder. So as it's gotten harder, as we've had more choice in the matter, they've had to be more sensationalistic, like, come over here, look at this amazing, horrible thing. And people, unfortunately, human beings are more motivated by fear than by happiness and joy. It's just how it's always been. Go as far back in history as you can go and you will not find anything different. It's part of the human condition. So what they want, or I should say what they wanted, was to make money. But at some point, I do believe things shifted. And I do think now you have a mixture. I think of people at the top who are rolling the dice they're still in it for the money, but it's like they're feeding the crocodile, hoping it'll eat them last, or they'll have a sufficient amount of money to escape to some island somewhere when the blood starts flying. But I think they have editors and producers and people in their 20s who are educating these universities and these schools who are in it and pushing these shows, like pushing these scripts and you know what they read on the teleprompter, because that's what they want. They literally want it. So I think you have a really dangerous mixture of very wealthy people making money off of other people's revolutionary utopian ideal and everybody in the middle is stuck. The music will make you dumb. The media makes you hate. And they control them both. The rain no escape. They put the world in a state of chaos, economy crashing and massive layoffs. Black against white or it's left versus right, divide and conquer and control is to pay all. Screaming from the rooftops, beat down better. Turn us on each other now, no lives matter. If we do what the news wants, blood don't splatter. Turn us on each other till no lives matter. Yeah, I got, I got nothing to, I mean, I don't know what you were hoping for. <laughs> if you were hoping I was going to pick it apart or say, what a terrible thing. And he has like holes in his face and tattoos everywhere. What a terrible influence. I disagree. I think he's real. So uh, thank you, Tom McDonald. I thought that was great. I, I'm going to do more because uh, I'm curious what else he has to say. I think we have to stop... Um, categorizing people as you know good influences or bad influences based on superficial characteristics um so i know there are probably some of my audience who are going to say you know oh but he looks this way and I'm like, so what <laughs> i mean that's the beauty of america like you can be whoever you want to be and and by the way i say that about people who say they're trans same thing 
if that's what how you want to live your life and you're an adult and you can you know make an informed decision about that then i don't see an issue with it that's not the same as me saying i think the ideology that's being pushed on little kids is is correct or that i think the anti-science they're pushing about sex and gender is correct no it's not and i can hold those two ideas in my brain at the same time that i can you know love you and respect you and treat you with decency if you try to live your life in you know as another sex or another gender and you've taken the steps to do that and you're you know just living your life and not trying to voice that on anybody else that's just who you are super you're gonna get no problems from me at all but if you are going to go into schools and start telling impressionable young children that mommy and daddy are wrong or maybe wrong and maybe they should think about this or that or if you're a doctor or a pusher of pharmaceuticals who you know wants to use confused children to make money or advance an agenda then i'm going to fight you to my last breath and the same for people who want to push ideas of, you know, violence and resegregation and race, neo-racism and neo-Marxism and all these other bad ideas that are bad for all of us, but in particular for children, because they haven't been here long enough and they haven't been exposed to enough competing ideas to beat back the forces he's singing about. So where his song intersects with education is that it explains how indoctrination is coming at our kids from every angle. So when I sit here and tell you to pull your kids out of schools, I'm not promising you a rose garden here. I'm not telling you they're perfectly safe. I'm telling you that you as a parent have to be more aware and more involved in their socialization than you have been and turning them over to the state to do it for eight hours a day times nine months a year times 13 years is a really, really bad idea because the state currently is in sync with the ideas he's singing about, divide and conquer. They have the most to gain. People in power have the most to gain. People who just want to lock up their power and not lose it not for even a minute, like just want to keep it forever. Those people are working through the schools but they're also working through journalism, but they're also working through entertainment, just like he said. So even when you pull them out of the school, you're gonna have to do a little more work. Yeah, you're gonna have to do more work to uh, talk with your kids about what they consume, because you are what you consume. Whether it's food, whether it's you know entertainment, news, books you read, it doesn't. that's who you become. That and the influences in your face, like your parents, your relatives, your teachers, your role models, et cetera, that, that's, that's going to feed who you become. So the irony is if you had a kid immersed in a great education, learning real history about the world and the human condition and forming their own identity, not forming an identity according to what a bunch of adults tell them it is, um, you're, you're going to be more resilient in the face of negative influences, potential negative influences for things like entertainment and news and so forth, because you'll have a critically thinking mind. So there have always been these kinds of influences in entertainment and news, always. It's always been there. There have always been you know, muckraking journalists with sensationalistic headlines. There have always been scam artists peddling snake oil. There have always been rebellious teenagers trying to lure kids into rebellion. There have always been entertainers who were you know, not above board, et cetera. That's always existed. But when there was a strong nuclear family, when you had a proper education with critical thinking, the only people who'd fall prey to those charlatans and scam artists and abusers and users were those people who didn't have an education at all. They didn't have access to it. They certainly weren't the kids who had a college degree and the debt to go with it. <laughs> but now you have supposedly educated people who are believing the most unbelievable lies Things that just don't even pass the most basic common sense smell test. And I think that's because you now have and probably have had since, gosh, I keep saying it goes back to about the 80s, but that, that's what I think. You've got all these major institutions working together. This is a top-down 
thing. This is not grassroots. This isn't a bunch of people were corrupted by music and by entertainment and they took over the schools. N no, uh-uh. These are intellectuals and traitors, if we're going to put a fine point on it, who actively want to take down the United States of America. They could even be foreign. There might be some foreign influence going on here. And you have them having infiltrated our educational institutions, our journalistic you know, institutions, and the political institutions. All of it. They're everywhere now. So the only way to fight back against all of them, but never mind, you know, one of them at a time, is to pull your kids away from these other influences. And as I said, I think if you just pull them back from the schools, you would have a little less to worry about from the other sources because they would be disinclined to consume them. And I know this because who gave me the material for yesterday's video about K-pop? My 13-year-old daughter. Who's the one who canes me voluntarily? I didn't have to go look over her shoulder. She's been taught well enough, even in just the little amount of time that I've homeschooled her or just been talking to her over her, her school for the past, uh, you know, however many years that she's been in school, you know, K through seven, at this point, six. She was K through six. Um, she's, I've gotten through enough that she saw crazy and she came to mama. And she said, this is nuts. And after she watched the video from yesterday, she said, I've got more. <laughs> so... Those influences are still out there. Those kids are still out there being crazy. That those the 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 music, the entertainment that wants to tell her that you know to be racist or to be whatever that that's still going on. But she has the ability to think critically about it and say, yeah, this is nah. I don't want any part of that. I just want to listen to the songs. I just like the music. I'm not paying attention to this nonsense. And the only reason she's in that bubble up is to actually have a chance to talk to the the artists. She's not really wanting to engage with the other people unless they demonstrate that they are sane. And she's showing me that she has good judgment because she's showing me what she thinks is correct and what she thinks is not. And that's due to the influence I've been able to have with her at home. So I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm telling you that when you pull your kids out of school, you will be able to arm them against those other things that you literally can't control. If your kid has access to a computer or a phone or a television ever when you're not around, which most kids do have now, some, in some cases they have to for safety, and especially if they're older or they have a job and they can pay for it themselves if they're over 16, for example, and they've got a job and they've got their own, you know, whatever, computer you don't want to get into a power battle with your kid controlling that stuff because you can't control what's coming in from the school. You handle the education and they'll take care of the rest. I, I, I really feel strongly about that. The earlier you start, though, the better. The earlier you start, the better. And you will form stronger bonds that will result in a strong, resilient, resourceful human who knows BS when they hear it. Well, anyway, that's my reaction to Tom McDonald. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I hope you'll consider liking this video. Subscribe to the channel. Comment. Tom, if you're out there, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on this topic. And that's the video.